The largest of Coro Zorfia's paintings, exhibited at the Salon of 1861, is today in the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston. Orpheus's beautiful bride, Eurydice, has just died from the bite of a serpent. In mourning, he plays his lyre to three female companions. He is dressed in ancient fashion, whereas the companions appear more contemporary, dressed in Italian folk costumes. Coro's canvases surprised and beguiled art critics, fellow artists and art collectors. The works were modern and simple, yet grand. Coro built his landscapes on solid geometric forms. His light-drenched palette of colors, his choice of scenes with luminous atmospheres, and his signature brushwork, at first bold and solid then maturing into a feathery, light touch, were all seen as new and innovative, and not always immediately grasped. So the heroic bard Orpheus was the son of the muse Calliope and Oegris, king of Thrace. Though there were also traditions that claimed his father was the Olympian god Apollo. Orpheus was the greatest musician of his time, able to spell by not just humans with his lyre, but also plants, animals, and even inanimate rocks. His skills were invaluable to Jason and the Argonauts, who he accompanied on their journey to retrieve the Golden Fleece. I'll probably make a video about those adventures at some point before the heat death of the universe. He also was said to have visited Egypt and learned the secret rites of Dionysus, which he then brought back to Greece and formed the Orphic mystery cults. This story was probably created to explain perceived similarities between Greek and Egyptian cult worship. Of course, by far the most famous story involving Orpheus was of his love for his late wife Eurydice. Unfortunately, Greek writers like Diodorus Siculus and Pseudo Apollodorus only give us short summaries of this myth. The best and most detailed classical account comes from the Roman poet Ovid. On the day of Orpheus and Eurydice's wedding, Orpheus invited the marriage god Hymen, don't laugh, to attend. But once arriving, he couldn't manage to light his ceremonial torch, signaling bad omens for the bride and groom. Shortly after the wedding, Eurydice was walking in the grass with her naiad gal pals when she got bit on the ankle by a viper and immediately dropped dead. Orpheus was utterly crushed by the loss of his wife, and after realizing that his mourning would never end so long as they were separated, he resolved to get her back. He he traveled all the way into the underworld and came before Hades and Persephone, or I guess it would have been Dispater and Proserpina because Ovid was Roman. Orpheus then performed a passionate song, pleading with Hades to return Eurydice to the world of the living, reasoning that since all Camille Corot, in full Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, born July 16, 1796, Paris, France, died February 22, 1875, Paris, French painter, noted primarily for his landscapes who inspired and to some extent anticipated the landscape painting of the Impressionists.